Okay. Hey, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this uh, second copy of the, the session about disaster ninja. Uh, uh, I'd love to uh, to tell you a little bit about uh, about the tool, about how we came to create it, and uh, basically who we are. Uh, why why do you why why it is a good idea to know something about it? Uh, so I work at Contour. Um, uh, Contour is a product company specialized in disaster management and geoinformation. Uh, our solutions include data sets and products that are used in emergencies. We help our customers track events in real time, estimate risks, impact, and get notified about changes in the course of event. Uh, we have development offices in Belarus, Poland, United States, and uh, a number of people all over the world. I'm currently in Batumi, Georgia. Uh, we've been working with uh, disaster management organizations for around 20 years. We got some experience and we started creating our own solutions to help raise awareness uh, during I mean, preparation to critical events. Um, a bit about me. Um, can you see my screen? I wanna make sure. Okay, I hope so. Uh, then a little bit about me. I'm a head of product at Contour. Uh, I've started uh, working with OpenStreetMap uh, and getting involved in OpenStreetMap since 2008. Um, I'm committer in PostGIS. Uh, so if you need some help with geospatial databases, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, here is my Telegram, here is my Twitter. You can also find me on Pod Slack and in multiple other places. And uh, yeah, don't hesitate to add uh, me on LinkedIn or somewhere else. I'm based in Georgia, so my time zone is UTC plus four currently. And uh, yeah, I will guide you through the disaster ninja. And um, the plan for today is um, first, basically this session would have two parts, uh, two, two larger ones. First, a small presentation about the Disaster Ninja, about the story, about uh, how it is uh, it was created. Uh, then we will go through the main and key components that are available in the interface uh, and the history of creation of some of them. And uh, then there would be a home task that I hope uh, some of you have already started uh, trying to do. And uh, I will gladly answer any kinds of questions that may arise and maybe have a reason uh, since uh, the morning session. Okay, let's dive in. So how it started for us and what? Uh, so here is the interface of uh, the second version of Disaster Ninja. Um, in middle of 2019, we observed what um, making the size up after an earthquake in South America. And we just saw that uh, we could help a lot with the uh, automation to make it happen quicker. Uh, that's how the idea of Disaster Ninja came up and uh, as active contributor to OpenStreetMap community. We partnered with uh, HOT to create a tool to support rapid creation of emergency mapping campaigns. Uh, today, response coordinators use Disaster Ninja to prepare disaster size up documents and uh, sometimes mapping tasks in minutes instead of hours, uh, thanks to having all of the information in one place. So the key thing is uh, when you're starting an activation, an activation for a mapping campaign, the key thing that you need to figure out is where where do, where is map needed and where is uh, where are the gaps in the map. To find the, how do you know where is the gap in the map? Of course, you can try to go through the satellite imagery manually. Uh, you can uh, find uh, every house, every road there. And uh, after you process all the uh, uh, all the regions, uh, you can say that, uh, hey, you, you found out everything. Uh, this is how MapSwipe operates. Uh, but this is time and effort consuming and uh, hard to do quickly. Uh, but uh, one thing you can notice is that most of the maps 
uh, especially humanitarian maps, are um, population density maps because people map infrastructure around them. Roads are around people, buildings are around people, and well, we don't have a lot of maps of, uh, of the center of the ocean. Um, so why don't we use a population density map to find uh, the gaps in OpenStreetMap, so we, and uh, to do so, we had to find a good source for population density map. Uh, long story short, we found out that all of them are, are met in different ways. And uh, that's why we had to create our own. That would, uh, that, that would be, that would support our use case. Uh, so how did we create it? We took, um, we, we, first of all, the data set that we created uh, is publicly available. You can go to data.himdata.org and download it. Uh, you can uh, do your own analysis on top of it. Uh, there is a 30 day mapping challenge going on right now in which you can take part and that has this data set as one of the options to uh, to do something about it. And uh, yeah, so what we, what we did is that we took all the data sets we can find, uh, including Facebook high resolution settlement data, global human settlement layer by United Nations, Microsoft buildings, and of course, OpenStreetMap, and to find out uh, where people are actually are. Um, so the data set that started the whole idea of uh, creation of high resolution uh, population data sets was Facebook. Uh, a couple of years ago, Facebook decided that uh, they want to grow their user base but the only way to get more people on Facebook was to get more people connected to the internet. And um, to get the idea how much will it cost to build the infrastructure, the team decided to, to use computer vision algorithms on top of um, satellite imagery to find the houses. And uh, when we looked through the data, we found out that uh, although it covers <coughs> Huge regions. Uh, it actually all the buildings, especially the ones found in OpenStreetMap. Uh, so we had to add them and find other other ways to add them. <clears throat> Inspired by the um, success of Facebook data, uh, European Union looked at the, the success and decided that hey, we let's kick off our own global version. GHSL. Uh, GHSL is based on radar imagery instead of visible light. So instead of just the shape of the building, it picks up anything that is concrete or asphalt. And that includes roads. And uh, of course, people don't live directly on the road. And we had to clean, the, clean it up and clean up the falsely populated roads using the OpenStreetMap data. Uh, then uh, Microsoft came to the to the show, and uh, they published uh, the first uh, U.S. Uh, buildings data sets. Then they added uh, uh, Canada, Australia, then Uganda and Tanzania. And I believe by now they have covered the whole world. Uh, the thing is, yeah, yeah, the the, the buildings are there. Uh, if you look at the shapes, they are not perfect, but they are good enough to count them, to say that, hey, there's these many buildings are supposed to be on this in this area. So here on the screen, you can see Philadelphia uh, before we added buildings in rural areas and after. So before we added them, uh, there were, Philadelphia was considered well mapped. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, green area, uh, saying that there are no buildings, the, the buildings are there, and uh, whatever is mapped in OpenStreetMap is well mapped. Uh, but after we added uh, uh, Microsoft buildings into our population density data set, we found out that there is a lot of areas that uh, would actually require more and more mapping. Uh, we also cleaned out uh, 
all kinds of falsely precise density. So if we found out a cell that has 0 0.001 people per square kilometer, uh, well, we, we clean that up so that it doesn't distract you uh, when you need um, to find out where people don't live. That was a special, especially the case in uh, areas like northern Canada and deserted areas that don't really have um, a good map. So here is the interface of Disaster Ninja. It shows uh, on this screenshot, it shows a recent cyclone EM uh, that impacted the territory of Caribbean and United States. Uh, you have a disastrous panel on which you can um, select a different disaster to analyze and to look into. Uh, and uh, the feed behind it is also provided by Contour. This is one of our uh, uh, actually commercial offerings to read uh, through the, uh, to get the updates of any events that happen uh, worldwide. Um, we collect um, the updates from different entities, we standardize them, and we process, prioritize it, and uh, show in the same format for all kinds of events. Uh, so event feed is integrated into Disaster Ninja, so you can find both events and geometries uh, of them together with the uh, metadata that is attributed to them. Uh, but the big thing about uh, looking at disaster is and analyzing disaster is not just to have the information of, of the past disaster, uh, but to know when disaster happens. So to support this, uh, we build a notification system. So uh, whenever the disaster strikes, uh, we uh, try to collect the data about it and post it to disaster alerts channel on hot Slack. So notifications uh, show what happened, where it happened, what was the time frame, was it was severity. Uh, and uh, the most important for humanitarian use case is how many people are exposed to the disaster. We only send uh, the alerts about disasters that have humanitarian need, but there's a lot more disasters happening that uh, don't really have a humanitarian impact. So uh, if you are on Slack on this channel, uh, you can just, uh, you can join it right now if you haven't yet. And um, you will get notifications, and you, in one click, you can get to the main interface to start analyzing whether you want to start an activation or not. Um, the other thing that's available in Disaster Ninja is all kinds of imagery that is in the area. We, we take it from editor layer index, the same thing that's used in OpenStreetMap editors. And uh, yeah, like in editors, it depends on on the area in which you are editing. So if you uh, if your disaster happens to have a specific imagery uh, imagery specific to this region of the disaster, it will also be shown in this panel. Um, one thing that we recently did together with Hot was that uh, we now support Open Aerial Map Mosaic. Open Aerial Map is an open source uh, map uh, of all kinds of imagery that's of uh, aerial imagery collected by volunteers. So uh, currently the most popular way to do that is to fly a drone and process that imagery and uh, upload it to Open Aerial Map. For a while, it was not an option to, to have a look at all the images as a one layer, but what we did, we downloaded, we, we downloaded the, all, all of the images from Open Aerial Map and we stitched them together into one single layer to enable you to quickly browse through the community contributed um, layers. This is especially useful if you are in a disaster and if you happen to have a drone there, uh, you can uh, have the imagery collected right away. 
the base map that is on under everything is um, uh, is black and white. It's called contour lines. Uh, it is specifically designed to not interfere with any colors that are of uh, the colors of analysis on top of it. Uh, you can also have uh, you you also have access to all other kinds of um, base maps. So if you want to browse through uh, open street map hot st style uh, cycle map or or any others, they are also available for you to switch to them. But the reason why we have this black white uh, is to actually uh, support uh, the core feature of Disaster Ninja is the analytical layers that are called bivariate layers. Uh, so re ready to use set of layers, but bivariate uh, layers allow you to see two things at the same time. Uh, so the uh, one of the uh, things on this map is population. The other one is open street map objects. Uh, so here you can see the relative distribution of population density and open street map objects. If you have a lot of objects, um, it's it's always fine to have uh, a lot of objects on the map. But if you happen to have uh, not a lot of objects, but a lot of people in the area, it would be highlighted as red so that you can see that um, certain region is not well mapped. Um, and uh, it helps to draw attention to the quality, uh, the quality of the map, and uh, find uh, finding the red spots on the Disaster Ninja map help, helps you uh, find the next places to map. Uh, this is also not the ultimate way uh, to to deal with the data because you can have different kinds of um, of layers. Uh, here you can see. Building quantity and road completeness, they are two separate layers uh, in addition to the general OpenStreetMap object uh, density. Uh, so here you can see, for instance, that uh, while buildings are available in Uganda, uh, roads are not very complete in the same, uh, in the same region and that uh, 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 they can require mapping in that specific. Uh, if you happen to have a disaster there, and that disaster type requires uh, you to have roads um, on the map, then you would probably want to create a project there. Uh, some places like Thailand uh, have a huge difference uh, between those two because. Uh, uh, like in Thailand, there was an activity by Facebook to implement uh, to map all the roads in the region. But what uh, they didn't do, they didn't create uh, the map of buildings, and vice versa in in, in other regions. Um, the other layer that we have is uh, OpenStreetMap mapping activity. Uh, so one thing to consider when you are taking part in a community is the community itself. Uh, so it shows uh, the level um, the level of mapping activity in the region. Uh, if you you can see whether there were people who mapped in the region for the last two years, even though you can have uh, you, uh, you can find a lot of uh, old stale imports in OpenStreetMap uh, that were not ever touched afterwards. And so this map uh, helps you find them. And uh, uh, you can think that the region is OK, but the community is not present uh, on there. And no, no one actually curates the map. Uh, and uh, we also decide whether people are local or not local. Uh, if uh, people are local in the area, if they edit it in the, around this area, we will highlight them in green. Uh, this also helps uh, activation group um, to decide whether they want to allow um, uh, novice uh, people to join the project and to create uh, create the map in the region, or should only uh, well-trained people 
uh, be touching the region so that you cannot, if something goes wrong, nothing gets broken. Um, another important quality indicator is antiquity of the layer of, of data. Uh, oftentimes you can also have a map that looks green, but it was not updated for some years. So here, uh, what the two indicators that we combine together are the map use and the last added date. Uh, here you can see a city that has um, a lot of interest. Uh, a lot of people uh, look at the at the map, uh, but um, uh, even though the center of the city gets maintained, the outskirts are, are not updated for, uh, well, since 2019. So this layer helps you find uh, the regions that get overlooked and also highlights the layers and highlights the areas where people actually use the map. So oftentimes uh, you can find the... Uh, some spot that is, uh, I don't know, tourist attraction, or there is some other reason for people to look at the map, uh, but uh, the, the, the area is not maintained and no one actually created the map. This uh, helps prioritize the map uh, in a way so it gets used. Um, as I mentioned at the start, we are not only uh, supporting OpenStreetMap, we also supporting uh, other kinds of organizations uh, like local governments and uh, disaster management uh, organizations. So one of the layers that we we published is, for instance, a fire service scarcity risk. Uh, it is um, created to help manage uh, disaster preparedness on a city scale. So if you have a um, certain city, uh, you want to make sure that uh, there is enough fire brigades that can access, uh, uh, that can go to any spot in the city to put out the fire. Uh, we have pretty similar layers uh, with distances to hospitals and uh, other kinds of communities. The, those layers are global, they are OpenStreetMap based. So every time you map a fire brigade or a hospital, it appears there and covers some part of, of the country in green. Um, yeah, so that's that's another example. Uh, as you can see, the, the layers are pretty similar. And uh, to build them internally and commercially, we have uh, created uh, a tool called Insights Engine. Uh, one of the tools inside the engine is a bivariate correlation matrix. So whenever you have a, um, a region in which you want to find out what's interesting, you can uh, open up the matrix, see to this, pick two of some indicators, see how they are correlated, show them on the map and uh, check out whether the statistical relationship uh, actually means something for for people. Uh, yeah, if uh, we will be happy to provide the access to the tool uh, to the participants who fill out uh, the homework. Um, the other non-bivariate kind of layers that we have is urban core. Uh, so often you have to decide where to prioritize your efforts to update uh, the map and to create something. So Urban Core highlights the most densely populated areas affected by disaster. Uh, on the screen, you can see them in orange. So even though disaster affects a huge, huge region, 60% um, of people live in the orange areas. The green areas of outskirts are also provided so that you can um, also uh, consider all of the regions uh, in, in your analysis. Uh, you can download them as GeoJSON files 
uh, and that helps you create uh, tasks in Task Manager right away, or do a further analysis in your um, uh, favorite GIS system. Uh, the other layer is to uh, the, the important thing in for for quality is to have a local community that updates and maintains the map and uh, the problem with the communities is that everyone speaks different languages and they talk in different places over the internet uh, they differ in the ways they communicate and different the way they coordinate and uh, that's why we build uh, a layer that picks up uh, the active contributors and uh, shows them their names on on the map so you can find uh, the most active map editor in the area uh, we also try to identify who of them are possibly from that area uh, and highlight them in green and there you can click on the username go to the profile and send them a message ask them about something and uh, uh, find out what is the ground truth, what is what is actually happening, if they are really local. Um, the other thing is that information from Hot Task Manager helps uh, decide whether to start a new task, or maybe you will just want to change a priority for a past one. So here is a cyclone that uh, covers the region in which you already have some ongoing tasks. Maybe you just want to bump the priorities for them. Uh, also, if you are creating new tasks, uh, we are showing outlines so that you can pick up the territory that is adjacent to the past uh, tasks and uh, doesn't overlap them, so you don't have any conflicts. Um, in addition to selecting the polygons uh, manually um, or just drawing or taking disastrous as polygon, um, in case you need to build um, hypothetical scenarios, uh, then uh, you, you, you can take pick uh, your favorite administrative boundaries from OpenStreetMap using the corresponding tool. Uh, so this helps you create the analysis pretty quickly so you just uh, come in and uh, click on the region where you have to want to create something and uh, in a reproducible way and so someone else on the other computer clicking on the same region will get pretty much the same numbers uh, speaking of numbers the analytics that we provide are not only in maps uh, but also in the statistics and numbers um, by default, we show the numbers for uh, useful for disaster response uh, from what's perspective. So this would be a number of open street map gaps, number of people affected, and uh, how well the region is mapped. Uh, for commercial users, we are also able to show a lot of different other st statistical information. Uh, on the air temperature, satellite direct, direct uh, statistics, and uh, other recent disaster impact data. Um, to maintain our core data sets like population density, we need to make sure that we take care of the data sets in OpenStreetMap. Uh, so one of the tags we care about a lot is population tag. If population tag on OpenStreetMap um, boundaries is filled in, if it does not contradict uh, between administrative levels and between overlapping administrative units, um, then we will take it and apply to our population density data set. So to ensure that uh, we publish information about such inconsistencies, uh, you can have a look at them in our reports page. And we also try to, to fix them ourselves each time we do a release. Reports look like tables. Uh, all of them have a column uh, that uh, opens up uh, Open Street, Java OpenStreetMap Editor, Josem, uh, for you to, to look into it and uh, to consider that uh, you probably want to do something about it. 
Here is, for example, the unmapped places report. This is a kind of report that's tricky to show on a map because it is a report that shows uh, the most populated, the populated areas that have high view count that don't have any object. So the, all the map that you will show is uh, just empty map, but you can uh, browse them on in your editor and create probably some map in your favorite country. And this would be the most useful spots to, to create a new map from our point of view. Um, so I'd say that this is it for the core part of presentation, the main one. We have uh, a small home task, uh, which would be the practical part. So uh, please join hot Slack if you haven't yet joined hot Slack. Um, go to Disaster Alerts channel. Uh, it is open channel where all the alerts from Disaster Ninja and other systems are posted. Uh, pick up any disaster that catches your eye. Well, open up a notepad and uh, uh, try to, to analyze why. Why did you think that this uh, disaster uh, is interesting? If you don't find any interesting disaster that was recently happening, uh, choose your favorite administrative boundary uh, just on Disaster Ninja. And then try logging into Disaster Ninja. Uh, request an account if you don't have it yet. Uh, and um, write a short report on the selected um, either disaster or administrative uh, region. Try to find out. Uh, I've walked you through the uh, the list of features that we have. Try to find out uh, the most uh, insights that you can discover. Uh, find out, find out um, whether you have the map, whether the there is uh, open street map uh, complete. Uh, whether you need what need, what is needed to improve the quality of the map. If something is needed to be improved, and uh, yeah, send it back. Uh, send it back to to me. I will happily add if you if if you wish. And uh, for people who want access to the some of commercial features, we will uh, provide it. Uh, given that you 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 have created the account. So how to reach out? Uh, on the lower right corner, there is a blue chat box. Open it up, send a message, and uh, uh, I'll try to pick it up. And maybe some of my colleagues, if you do it later. Here are some links that may help you. So Contour.io is our website. Uh, there we have some portfolio pages about Disaster Ninja that would have this walkthrough in more textual form, uh, probably shorter maybe in some other insights. Uh, Disaster Ninja itself would be your to-go place to analyze whether you have the map in the area. If you need to do some kind of other analysis based on our data, we are providing uh, population data sets on uh, UN humanitarian data uh, exchange. Uh, so there, on data.humdata.org, you can always find contour population of latest version. And uh, yeah, don't forget Slack. In Slack, please join the Disaster Alerts channel. And uh, if something happens, uh, help others map it. I'd say that's it. I'm ready to take your questions if you have any. Awesome. Thank you so much. There's one question in the chat so far. Please, guys, feel free to unmute yourself in case you have any questions, or you could just type it in in the chat. So the question that we have is like, how long does it take for Disaster Ninja to update its data from OSM? Uh, yeah, we uh, we usually have daily updates unless something, uh, something bad happens. Uh, you can always find out uh, how long, uh, when was the Disaster Ninja last updated. 
uh, on uh, on a description page of the data set. So if you look into, I don't know, OpenStreetMap quantity, if you click on the eye icon, you will find out that it was updated in the middle of um, November 5th. So the data is from November 5th, which is a day and a half uh, uh, ago. Awesome. Any more questions? Maybe another thing I wanted to mention is uh, uh, there were so many questions asked in the earlier session. Uh, once the recording is processed, please feel free to go and like go through and see the, how you can apply Disaster Ninja. Otherwise, there's one more question again. Thank you. Could you please send us the home work task, uh, the home work task to Becky so that we can paste it into our channel. Okay, yeah. I ac actually just took a screenshot and I was planning to do that as soon as the session is complete. So yes, I will share it, Jenny, as soon as the session is end for you guys to practice. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, if you have, uh, if something doesn't work for you, if you press some button and you think it should work, but it doesn't, uh, if something else uh, happens, we have the chat box. Don't uh, hesitate to reach out there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then you talked about the social media platforms. Uh, maybe we can share again. Yeah, so uh, on Twitter, we are at Contour Inc. Uh, you can reach out to us at hello at Contour.io. And uh, at Contour.io itself, you can have links to our social media platforms. We have a pretty active LinkedIn page. Also, if you are a participant of this workshop, uh, don't hesitate to add me on LinkedIn or somewhere. Okay, thank you. I've also taken, I'll share the social media as well in our in our channel. Um, if there are no questions, I think uh, we can end here unless uh, Derefai has anything else to add. Uh, no, I think that that is it for now. Uh, thanks guys. Thanks for inviting me over. And uh, yeah, hope to see each other next year. Awesome. Thank you so much again for accepting to speak to the interns. It was very insightful. I actually love this tool. I use it for <clears throat> when I'm creating projects in the tasking manager. It just helps me to uh, to identify areas that have already been mapped, existence of buildings. It is it's really, really very helpful. And I, 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 I intend to share these uh, recordings to the hot stuff and it will be on, on, uh, on our YouTube channel so many people will have a chance to like um, go through it and see if they can apply it in their organizations. Yeah, otherwise, thank you so much everyone for joining and have a great day. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.